Okay, so I don't know if everyone will be able to hear me. Um, I know I'm not the loudest, but um, I won't be offended if anyone feels like they need to get up at halfway through or whatever at any point. Feel free to move in closer if you need to see the projector or if you just can't hear me. Um, anyway, my name is Paul, if you don't know me. Um, and I'm going over, I guess, BTRFS. As Wyatt kind of alluded to earlier, um, well, what is better, better FS? Um, it's a B-tree file system. Um, not much more to it than that. Uh, it's based on copy on write. Um, but pronunciations. Mm. For whatever reason, people just cannot make up their minds. <laughs> Butter, better. Uh, the last one eludes me. I didn't see that until just the other day on Wikipedia. What? Butter. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. I don't know if anyone's going to get the context if you just start using that word, but if you can, great. The one true pronunciation is even on Oh. BTRFS. Oh yeah, like literally, if someone says BTRFS, yeah, that is the one other. Um, I know Wikipedia had that on there at some point. Um, it's since been removed. <laughs> so yeah, um, started by Oracle. They they began work on it in 2007. Uh, we ended up seeing it in the Linux kernel, uh, 2.6.29. Um, and as of 2014, they considered it stable. Um, not to be confused with production ready, but stable. Uh, so what are we looking at as far as features go? When it comes to file systems, that's pretty much all that matters. Um, supports COW, Cal, for people that don't know, copy on write. Um, native things for transparent compression. Uh, so you don't have to worry about compressing, or you can save space, rather. Um, anything it can be a plain text file that you write to disk, and the BetterFS just handles it. Um, so writes it, compresses it, and upon reading it back, decompresses and you don't have to do anything. Um, supports data and metadata checksumming, so upon writing data to disk, it will do a CRC on it and also write that CRC to disk. When reading data back, it reads the CRC that it calculated before, generates, calculates the uh, CRC again on the data that it's reading back, compares the two, uh, essentially if they match, then it knows the data uh, or at least the data should be uh, sane and not, uh, you know, subject to corruption. Um, otherwise, if it is and they, and they don't match, uh, BetterFS does have um, means of trying to get your data back, um, you know, using redundant <coughs> copies, uh, for, for example. Uh, support snapshotting, um, read-only snapshots, writable snapshots, which I was surprised to see. Uh, I don't know. I've never had a use case for writable snapshots, but I'm sure it's out there. Um, as I alluded to, supports striping and mirroring. So essentially, they don't call it RAID 1 or RAID 0, um, but it does support the equivalent of that. Um, so RAID 1, RAID 0, and RAID, uh, like a variant, you know, combined RAID 10. Um, technically not stable or, or usable RAID 5 or 6. Um, I suppose there's, there's changes in there that you could do, but it's, I think at this point, considered experimental. Um, supports things like online defrag, scrubbing. Um, so those of you who are familiar with uh, ZFS, ZFS I believe the, like, the equivalent here would be resilvering. So we go through, you basically tell BetterFS, I want you to go through all the data and check the checksums. It's, it's basically just forcing you to read all the data off disk and it'll check it and repair it if you tell it to. Uh, other than that, supports subvolumes. Initially, I had no clue why anyone would want to use subvolumes, volumes, but at the same time, I'm kind of, um, I mean, if you look at any of my systems, I don't have a whole lot of mounts be to begin with. Boot would be the only separate one. If everything else is just in, like, root. There's no separate home or anything like that. Um, the notable exceptions with subvolumes I can think of would be technically snapshots or subvolumes, and uh, if you are interested or in a position where you can use disk quotas, you can set separate ones on, on a per uh, subvolume basis. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I was going to say. Subvolumes, the main reason you want them is for taking snapshots of subvolumes. 
without having to have that snapshot encompass the entire process. Right. I guess you could take snaps of small parts, yeah. So, my example, Oracle database. Each database, whether there's on a sub volume, I can snapshot the each database independently. Okay, yeah. And roll it back independently. Valid use case, definitely. Okay, so I was just going to go through, I guess, a bit of a demo with you guys. Um, kind of show you how hopefully easy it is to get BetterFS going. Um, so I've set up, uh, in, in this case, I tried getting BetterFS working with just files because I don't exactly have an abundance of block devices on my, on my system. Uh, but it turns out it doesn't entirely like that. So uh, I've set up smaller partitions to work with. Uh, let's see here. So in this case, we'll be using SDA 3 and 4, uh, two 20 gig partitions. Uh, initially, let's see here, to, to get BetterFS just going, it's M MKFS, BetterFS. If I could type. Um, let's see. Th there's two ways I guess we could um, go with this. I, I've, I was planning on showing you guys RAID because in my opinion that's one of the most beneficial setups with BetterFS. Um, it's obviously possible to just tell it, hey, here's two devices and, and you know have redundancy between them or you could even go, um, I'll, I guess I'll show you guys the route of putting BetterFS on a single drive and then later down the line maybe you're, you're interested in adding another disk um, and, and getting that kind of redundancy. So. Um, we can go ahead and show you that. Let's see here. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with the MKFS. You point it to a block device. In this case, we don't need any other options. And now BetterFS is it's formatted that block device with BetterFS. We can go ahead and mount it. And there's nothing there, obviously. Um, assuming we wanted to convert it at some point, we can we can always, like I said, do that. BetterFS device add. Tell it which one you're interested in adding, and we can add that to our existing BetterFS. Um, I, I hesitate to call it a pool, but. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to, to figure out what the, or to remember what the, the terminology there is. Um, so anyway, at this point it's just literally add those. Um, the default I believe here is going to be setting up redundancy on the metadata, but not on the actual data. The data will just be spanned across, um, kind of like RAID 0, but not quite. Um, so in this case we can tell BetterFS to balance our data, um, change things. <coughs> specifying deconvert to specify that, hey, we want to raid our data. So in this case, we're saying that the D here meaning data. Um, and then similar, similarly for metadata, we can say mconvert equals raid one and point it to our betterFS um, mount point. So yeah, fairly simple. We're just saying, hey, we want to raid both things, metadata and data. So it goes ahead and uh, does that. Right now there's no data in there, so it does it faster. Um, if you had data in there, it would have to start moving things from disk to disk. Um, so yeah, as you'd expect from a file system, you can use it and write files. <laughs> Wouldn't be very useful if you couldn't. And of course, Great, so we can do that. Um, so we've got BetterFS running on in, a, in kind of a RAID configuration. Um, obviously in this case it's a bit of a pseudo RAID because it's both on the same solid state drive in this Mac. So, you know, <laughs> obviously if you were running this in a serious condition you'd run, have these on two individual disks. Um, but yeah, so one of the other features of BetterFS, compression. Um, by default, not enabled. We, we can go ahead and enable that um, by just, in this case, it's just a mount command. So I'll unmount betterfs and mount it with an option. 
compress equals and then whichever kind of compression that you're interested in. Uh, right now, I believe the two that you can choose from are Zlib and LZO. Um, so whichever. Uh, LZO obviously being a bit faster, but obviously demo purposes. <coughs> For mounting, um, in, in this case, BetterFS is like really doesn't care. You can pick any disk that is a part of your, um, uh, again, I want to use the word pool. I know it's not accurate, but uh, so I could specify SDA3 or SDA4 in this event, and it'll just find the other one and, and make sure everything is uh, um, functional. So we mount it, we can see that it's, it's now enabled compression. But the one thing that this doesn't do is any files that you wrote in advance that were, or before then are not going to be compressed. So right now the, the file that I had put there, hello, is not. Um, difficult to tell that it's, it, that it's not, but um, if you want to, you can still do that. Um, BetterFS has a way of doing it. File system defragment. So in this case, the dash C Z lib um, just specifies, hey, I want you to compress everything, uh, the R obviously uh, being recursive, everything in the M MNT directory, um, just go ahead and compress it with Z lib. Specifying verboso tells us the file has now been compressed, it was the only thing there anyway. Um, so that's how you can go back and compress everything after the fact if you want it. Um, If we're interested in uh, usage of like file system usage, obviously, uh, one of the things to note with BetterFS, your typical Unix tools like DF um, are not going to be worthwhile running here. So DF-H will um, uh, not not to say lie to you, but it's not going to be accurate. In this case, you're going to want to use uh, BetterFS file system DF, um, especially if you've got things like compression enabled. Um, otherwise, it just will not make sense at a certain point. You could be going over 100% usage. Um, just, again, something to note. Just use the, the BetterFS tool for that. Uh, so now that we've got compression enabled, just a bit of a test, we can write a massive file to it and see what we're going to get uh, as a result. So what compresses is better than zeros? I don't imagine a whole lot. And then if we take a look at the file system usage, you can see that there still isn't a whole lot of data used. So a Zlib compresses, things compress fairly well. Uh, a gig apparently compressing very well. I don't think it's changing now. But five megs, so not bad. Um, one of the other things that I mentioned, obviously checksumming and, and redundancy. Uh, so BetterFS has a way of scrubbing your data to make sure that your, like if you have things like drive failure, uh, silent corruption is a, a thing that does happen. Um, I guess the term, or one of the common terms is bit rot. Um, but there could be any reason why your data obviously is not what it's supposed to be. So in which case we can just issue the scrub command um, and point it to the mount point. We haven't run a scrub yet, so it doesn't say anything. It says there's zero errors, um, but you can run those. And the nice thing about this versus a typical like RAID 1, like if you were to use uh, MDADM um, to like verify your RAID, those kinds of things, BetterFS is intelligent enough to, to look at only the parts where there are data. So even though this is a, a 20 gig BetterFS, um, or you know, like 20 gigs of, of usable storage, um, it's only going to look at the one gig file, um, which is of course compressed. So it only has, has to look through five megs roughly. Um, so it can do that fairly fast. Um, until you start obviously using up more and more storage. Uh, let's see here. So as far as redundancy goes for it, um, kind of difficult to simulate failures in uh, in this, uh, you know, I can't yank out a drive or anything like that. Um, but what we can do is of course write a whole bunch of zeros to things or whatever else.
should mention that if you guys if you guys see me some type something other than three or four, <laughs> stop me before I press enter. <laughs> There's always that that moment where you're just like, oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if the state of you know the, everything on the laptop goes bye bye. It just makes for a bad demo. Doesn't really make my uh, life any more problematic. Uh, so in this case, I I obviously specified that we're wiping starting at SDA three. SDA four comes twenty uh, gigs after, so has to be a little precise in this in this case. Um, because I don't want to go into SDA4. If I do that, that's basically simulating dual drive failure. That would be a very bad demo. Um, should go beyond the end of the partition, though. No, you can specify 900 gigs, it will just yeah. stop at size. DD yeah. will? Let's say out of space. Device out of space. You sure? Yeah. We can try it. Read the manual. We'll, 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 we'll try it right at the end. To corrupt better, you uh, <laughs> corrupt the hard drive. We'll, we'll try it at the end, that's for sure. Um, Either way, I know that the, in this case, the math is going to work out so it gets right to the end of the boundary and it doesn't come back with the out of space message or anything like that. So now it's going to write over the entire um, virtual disk, however you want to imagine that. Um, uh, so the, the first disk for that BetterFS yes. uh, setup. And as we can see here, um, actually just to prove things, we'll of course clear everything out of cache. So now it has no option but to read that off disk, um, and of course we can, you know, Hello Mug is still there. Great. Um, so now in the event that we run a scrub, so is it rebuilding it right now? No. Okay. No, it's in this case it's it's smart enough to realize, hey, um, when it when you ask for this file, it. If it tried using the one disk, it's going to realize that it's obviously not there and, and start getting to the point where it's like, all right, I got to look at you know the other places where I can find it. Um, it doesn't. Um, I, I haven't found a place where it actually represents that to you as an error. Um, it seems like the one method for doing this would be at that point scrubbing. Um, so it won't actively fix it on the fly or anything like that. It's not going to go back and fix in this case everything's on on SDA uh, three. It's just going to go ahead and use uh, things from SDA4. Um, so yeah, scrub status, obviously I haven't run it yet, but we can go ahead and run scrub. And you said it doesn't even tell you that there is no SDA3 really right. anymore. But um, because of the, the, the checking that it does do, it's either going to give you the file as you wrote it or not at all. Right? It's not going to give you like a corrupted file. So we can go ahead and start the scrub. It says that there was errors, surprise, surprise, and we can print the status. So there were some corrected errors, and at that point it's gone ahead and now fixed SDA3. Um, so we're back to a functional kind of like non-degraded RAID array, um, if to use that term. Um, well, what does uh, uh, what does your uh, mounts look like if you uh, typed in mount and um... it just says that we have SDA three mounted. So there was nothing put in the kernel message log or anything. There might be. The message title. Oh yeah. When it took the errors, yeah. So it did. It did say it was. It was, was that when it was doing the scrub though, or is that when it accessed the file? That's a good question. We can try it again. It looks like time scrub. 2172? Same second. Well, let's try it again. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes but a second. I think we're still good for time anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah, it brought like that. Come on, this is 50% bit rot. Okay, is it going to complain? No, nothing yet. Good. Dropped cash. Still nothing, I hope. Good. And let's read the file. Okay, so yeah, it does complain about the read errors there. So that's nice. Um, so that's all well and nice. I, I suppose in this case, DMSG is kind of... Um, Useful, like we can see that obviously SDA3 there is is the problem. Uh, another way of seeing which drive is potentially acting acting up, uh, device status 
yeah, no, stats, sorry, uh, MNT. And we can see that SDA3 has some corruption errors going on. Um, so in this case, you see that obviously it's like, oh, okay, probably a bad drive, replace it and, and rebuild. Um, let's see here. I guess one of the last most interesting features of uh, BetterFS, snapshotting. So BetterFS, obviously, snapshots are fairly easy. I think most things are easy with it, um, but let's go ahead and nope. And what day is it today? So we can just, creating a snapshot, easy as that, tell it which uh, uh, better FS pool you're snapshotting and where you want the snap to be. In this case, it's exposed to us in the matter uh, as a folder. So we can just go ahead and look inside there and we have our other files that we had. Um, no, cat. So as you expect, it says hello mug, just like the other one says hello mug. Um, the dash R there, by the way, um, is just saying this is gonna be a, uh, a read-only snapshot and obviously to prove that it's a snapshot just do this <coughs> so now we cat that it says hello world we cat the other one and of course that one says hello mug um, so that's taking um, snapshots obviously leveraging the copy on write functionality of betterfs to kind of have the, the, the differences that you change in somewhere else as opposed to writing over the original file. Um, and then deleting um, snapshots or sub volumes even for that matter. Oop, yep, not right. Sub volume? Yep. And snapshots gone. Um, so yeah, those are the, I want to say the more um, common commands that someone getting involved in BetterFS would be using. Um, so some of the things that are currently lacking in planned development, um, online file system checking, uh, different file, uh, like checksum algorithms. Uh, there's kernel modules that obviously, uh, for, well, at least for Intel processors, you can use for um, hardware acceleration for, for CRC. Uh, I think it's CRC32, um, whatever it works out to. Um, can't remember the exact kernel module, um, but if you check that it's loaded, then um, hardware acceleration is something that it would do. Yes, checking is as easy as doing that. So BTRFS loaded, and that's the kernel module. Um, there's other compression methods that they're looking at implementing, most notably LZ4. Uh, so some things that are, are, are noteworthy. Uh, it, BetterFS currently does not support uh, swap files, unfortunately, so I guess we're stuck with using a separate partition for that. If you're using it for databases, virtual machines, those kinds of things, um, you're going to um, you're going to want to think it through. Um, probably putting in its own subvolume without copy on write, um, because if you have a database pointed at a betterfs volume that is um, that has cal, then things are going to get pretty slow pretty quick, um, unless you're constantly defragging things. Um, uh, you're just going to get far too many extents, and, and there's going to be far too many disk seeks going on. So unless you've got an SSD, it's probably yeah just better off disabling that. So you can use uh, Chatter to it, um, tell it to disable copy on write for a specific file or directory, or of course you can put that into a volume and mount it with no data cal. Um, and then as far as complaints go, my one kind of thing that I would like to see BetterFS get is no data cal and checksumming. So if you if you enable no data cal as, as a mount option, um, so in the event the guy would use it for a database or something like that, uh, you all of a sudden lose checksumming. So now corruption is, is, is you know a possibility at that point. Um, so yeah, I would like to see that in the future. 
And I think that, yeah, last slide. Uh, questions? Export, import. Does it happen at all in ZFS? Um, I know it's got options for that. I don't know. I, I've never done it. Um, I suppose we can... Specifically over the net, or no, I don't, if, if you can pipe it over, if it's out, it's a standard out. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. I'd have to double check to know for sure, though. So, no. as an assistant man, what's, what's my easiest clue to be aware of right now if I was going to work on that system that SDA 4 is in use, that even though it doesn't show up in the mount? What's the, what's the, what do I key on here to know that yeah, don't, no. don't go dinking around with SDA4 because you've just broken your reliability if you, if you wipe out that volume? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and it, that's something that, as far as I know, there's no conventional part. Like, mount obviously is not going to tell you. Um, but it does tell me it's BTRFS, right? So then I would then... Right. It says you're using it. to check... That was that what, stats. What, what, how yeah. do I check what's with SDA3? Um, so, so yeah, once you determine it's better FS, you at that point could issue the better FS. Um, let's see here. Device, what is it? Usage. So usage or stats? I suppose what either one of them would. I saw one of them show both devices. Uh, yeah, so usage, of course, Prince of usage, usage, of course, Prince usage per. Um, stats does as well. Um, there should be a list. Hey, you got your error right there. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I don't think usage shows you, but yeah, there, there's a, there's a few system methods show. there. File system show. What? Does that show I, there? I suppose they do. Um, I don't know if there's a specific one that's going to print it out like specifically for the no, information, no, but obviously it's that's there. Good, that's good yeah. enough. I mean, it's, it's giving me clear, clear, clear indication there you go. that there's another, that's another good. partition on another device involved. Yeah, I guess FS show would be more geared towards that purpose. Um, so. Is there anything you should be looking for if you see uh, in the stats, uh, you know, like there's a high uh, corruption value or something uh, like, like that 16561 yeah uh, does that mean you should start looking at replacing a hard drive or in this case no not for me obviously <laughs> but <laughs> but if, yeah obviously if this is a real world example then there's a very like it's a possibility um, it may not be corruption it may be you know write IO it might be read IO um, that that is end up but, but obviously you know Read your numbers, try and, and take a look at what the data is telling you. If it's if it's one drive that's throwing errors, then then yeah, that's pretty conclusive. It's probably a matter of bad drive, rip it out and replace it. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe just start off with the scrub, see if your numbers keep in incrementing. Um, it actually will show up in the system logs too. So, yeah. like it showed up in D message. So yeah. Does it suffer from some of the ills of ZFS, like uh, ZFS performance goes really bad after eighty percent? You know, does it have does it have linear performance till it's full, or does it have some? I know. I know. As it gets full, it's good. The performance isn't going to be this like as what it was. Um, it doesn't have any shot. Not that I mean, the biggest problem I found with BetterFS as far as performance goes was um, the. A times, so having that enabled um, is in conjunction with copy on write uh, was a big thing, um, or copy on write with things like um, if you've got a, a virtual machine, you know, disk image sh sitting there in a file or or a database that you're using that's you know obviously doing a lot of writes, then you're going to be getting a lot of extents and obviously at that point a lot of fragmentation. Um, so the fragmentation, like when I was using this on my my main system at home, it doesn't have an SSD, so spinning metal. And um, I, I mean, I was a typical redundant, like two disks, obviously, uh, RAID 1-ish. And it was a noticeable difference over time having Chrome run on that um, and not running things like scrubs or, or, uh, or defrags. Um, over time, Chrome would go from like, you know, okay, it launched in a second to, all right, now it's launching in 10 or 15 <clears throat> seconds. It's like, all right, time to, time to figure out why things are getting slow. 
Chrome is so gobble, gobble power. Yeah, well, I mean, the problem with those is they, like, browsers these days now, I mean, I, Chrome specifically stores a lot of its stuff in mm -hmm. a, uh, like, it, it's either a SQLite database or something very like a SQLite database. So lots of rights yeah. for, for bookmarks and whatnot. Getting back to the scenario of a disk failing, so, so say you start noticing errors on a particular disk, is there a way to sort of gracefully fail that disk before removing it, or do you just yank it out and count on that's a, the RFS to do the right either thing? Either or. Great question. Yeah. That's a, that, yeah, no, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I, I haven't really encountered that scenario yet. Um, I have. Either or. <laughs> yeah. So this is extremely useful that in getting into SSDs. You were able to I mean, add the, 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 the four, SDA four. Can you remove SDA three? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Um, uh, while SDA four is. You would have there. to change the um, data type to single. Uh, let's see here. Or the. Yeah. So there's a device remove. There you go. Um, is it seriously going to ask me for a path? Ah, I'm mm -hmm. unable to go below two devices on read one. Yeah. So I'd probably have to do a balance again and, and maybe tell it that, hey, I want to convert mm -hmm. this. Um, to single. But yeah, um, like Eric's saying, you, as far as like yanking a drive goes, as long as you yank the right one, you're okay. <laughs> um, if and you're then, yeah. If you're spewing a lot of errors off the one drive, you're not going to be able to rebalance because of the errors. Right. He's going to try to move the data off the one. Right. Well, you can do a replace. Well, it's, it's, it's mirrored right now, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah. No other questions? Okay, cool. Thanks,